So today I'm here with the awesome Lillian Braun. She's here in Houston, Texas, by way of Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Lillian. Hi. So before we get started, just tell us a little bit about who you are. I am a girl. I'm just a girl. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm a singer and a creative. I'm a, I'm a recording artist. That's what I will say. I am a recording artist who records at studios. I had to because <laughs> the list can go on and on because I I feel like people wear so many hats, but um So tell me four hats that you that you wear. Oh my gosh. Uh the hold my tongue hat, <laughs> the no let me stop. <laughs> um and just having an eye, being a creative director, mm -hmm. um having visions, like different visions for other people and suggesting things to people. And um, another hat that I wear is a, uh, it's just the advice hat. Just giving people advice and, or listening, like hearing out, you know, people's struggles and problems. I think it's for me, I love people so much and I love people's stories that um, it benefits me from just listening. And then for other people, it's like getting stuff off of their chest. So um, that, what else? kind of hat like the mentor hat I guess mentor hat can I say that but wouldn't that go with the I mean these are the hats that you wear so if you're a mentor um do you mentor in music or you mentor more in life or I think I mentor in life I mean if people either people can get a direct um get direct advice from me or just learn from my mistakes mm -hmm. um I don't know as I'm sitting here and wanting to tell you all of my hats, <laughs> I, I'm i just going to say I'm sometimes I have just been too vulnerable and I overshare. Mm -hmm. So right now in my head, I'm thinking of ways to not answer this question. <laughs> so I really can't answer it. I just wear the hat that I wear and uh, God made me a person that I can adjust to any environment. So it's just so many, so many hats. Or is that a separate compartmentalizing? That's like personal Lillian and then Lillian Blunt, the singer, is like, these are my experiences and I'm complimenting your else. Yeah, they're two separate things. They're, um, other people's experiences are, are their own. I think the only way other people's experiences affect mine is if it overlaps into my actual life and it makes me feel a way. Mm -hmm. Like typically I feel a way um, if it's, I don't want to say it's beef. But sometimes it's beef. Conflict. It's a lot of conflict, and I love conflict resolution. But I've learned that a lot of people don't like conflict re resolution. They um, may not like conflict resolution with me. Um, and so at this point, I don't know. Like I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the people. But I just know that now I just try to seek those who have the same expectation as me and know how to. I don't know, vibrate act on. Yeah, I don't even want to say vibrate because I just feel like um, with how the word vibrate has been used it's recently, misused it's, yeah, it's misused. And I think it's also used for like for those who have superiority complexes mm -hmm. and they use it against people. So I don't to even, yeah, to hurt people or like, I'm just vibrating high and you're at a low vibration. It's just like, come on, throughout all of our yeah, lives. Sorry, you said that everybody when they, Remember on Instagram when they had like the low, low vibrational, vibrational plates? plates? Girl! <laughs> and then, but the crazy part of the gag was the whole plate was non -vi high vibrational if you want to be in technical terms. Right. Like, come on, it's not even vegan food. But, <laughs> but yeah, so only only way people it's been experience taking out of context is, so heavily. Yo, and I hate that. Mm -hmm. But just um, my songs either come from a strong loving place because I'm just so engulfed in something that has just made me so entirely happy or something that has just pissed me off. It's just not in the middle. And I, you know, it's, it is what it is. So you use your voice like a paintbrush, like the way an artist uses a paintbrush. You paint across everyone's eardrums with your melodic sound. 
and it comes with all these different places I that are specific to you. I'm going to be completely honest. Doing music for so long and doing different podcasts and things, um, you always think about what you're going to say. You have PR people. You have things that you do want to say and that you don't want to say. Um, but to be perfectly honest, if I can be perfectly honest, I have no clue what the fuck I'm doing. I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I'm existing. I know things that I don't like. I, you know, my whole life has just been about, um, even since I was a little girl, just wanting to love, like trying to love. Oh my gosh, this is, I don't know why this is making me fear. I mean, this is a very honest and vulnerable conversation. Yeah, I don't know why I'm about to cry, but um, it has just been like a journey since I was like three years old. Just, um, just, um, just wanting to um, love and um, be surrounded by love and um, I don't know it's very fairy tale-ish it's very fairy tale-ish and um, it just reminds me of uh, one of my middle school ex-boyfriends told me he said he was like see you live like you live in a movie and life is not a movie and um i think i always looked at love and music and aspirations as um like very movie like you know what i'm saying like on on the inside or behind the scenes like you go through things but at least the grand the grand picture is beautiful so um I guess it's always been like a constant effort to to have that. And um, just anything that happens in between is what it is. And if it's good or if it's bad or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? It's just that. And um, I don't know. So I'm just here. And uh, the music is the music. Because it's just like, how do you even talk about these things? How do you talk about the art? How do you talk about anything because it's made and uh, you you never get to live the seconds that you live over. You, you just live them at that time. So it's hard to kind of, um, it's hard to explain them because you can never really explain how you feel specifically in those moments mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying the moment has passed, moment has passed and uh it's just like dinner and then uh like you make a nice meal and you consume it and you eat it and it is what it is and you might have a picture of it or a memory of it in your head but it can't be you know what i'm saying it can't be relived and i don't think you can ever explain anything enough to the point of where it resonates heavily with somebody who just would have had to been there like you know like, like what people say and so um just to wrap that question up like there's nothing that I can say about my music or any piece of art that I make that can make you believe that so it's just like for me it's a purge and whatever you take from that you take yeah, no, they just show you the ink lines and what do you see? Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not yeah. really anything that's there except for what you impose on it from your own perspective. Right, it's just perception. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know why I'm all teary. This is just, I'm it's sorry. Right. It's, it's honest. People, the whole point of us having this conversation about what you've done and what you're doing and what you're about to do is so that people can feel connected with you as a person. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you're a human being who has human feelings, and you've humanized yourself with this honesty. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter why. It just is. I'm so special. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how long have you been doing music? Uh, doing music. Um, 
Um, I was singing when I was a little girl. I just used to sing to myself. Mm -hmm. I used to go on the porch and I used to sing. Um, And that was at like three years old. And then fast forward, I think the first time I ever performed on the stage, I was like eight years old. And it was at a church anniversary. My mom was like my backup dancer. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother sewed my dress. Um, based off of like what I wanted it to look like, I actually have a picture online of that I think dress. I've seen that picture before. The purple dress. It's so adorable. Yes, and I like <laughs> the pearls, and we had our limo, and and then um, fast forward to high school. I want to say like my freshman year, um, I was rapping and recording, and I was low key singing mm-hmm. with my neighbors. And, um, but they were older men who were like out of high school. They were like in their twenties. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just this like 14 year old girl, mm-hmm. you know, doing that. So that was like the first time that I would start doing music or making music or right. really putting myself out there to do that. And, um, so that's been 22 years of doing music. Have you seen yourself evolve, evolve? I know like from childhood to adulthood, so I would say more like your adult years. Did you, because you had that start from such a young age, so you had an opportunity to know what you liked about what you were doing, mm-hmm. what you didn't like, and that molded you. So by the time that you were an adult, have you seen yourself kind of be uh, similar to who you were at the beginning of your career in this area as an adult, or did you find yourself evolving and going and testing out different things along the way? The only thing that I can say is just as far as evolution wise, right? Mm -hmm. I always have seen this really huge picture, this really, this version of me and I could only make what was made available to me. So recording in somebody's bathroom or in somebody's closet, even then, even though the quality wasn't the best, I made sure that it was the best quality that could be taken out of the quality, you know? (laughs) So I would just be like, that sounds horrible. Is there any way that we can mix it or make it not sound like this or make Mm -hmm. it not, you know? So I would always like push whoever was around. Um, you was like, listen, I have yeah. a vision, so I'm going to challenge you to get as close to my vision in yeah. these circumstances under these conditions as, as possible. possible. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, so I I don't, the, the evolution that has come has been just me doing the same things over and over and over. So I, even though I don't feel like some things have gotten better, I mean, it has gotten better because when I go back and look at even pictures and things like that, it's gotten better. Even my voice on certain songs, I can hear the difference on it. Mm -hmm. But because I haven't been able to like kind of like afford somebody to help me grow in ways that I want to grow, like I wish I had a trainer. I wish I had a vocal coach. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I had somebody to kind of like push me or help me get things organized and together. I uh, wish I had a promotional team. I wish I had better videos. Like, the videos that have been made were... Girl, let me, I'm going to cut you off for just a second because I love your videos. I sat here and watched almost all the videos that you have out here, and I am very impressed. Thank I you. do videography. I talk to videographers, you know. Yeah. And so, just when you show me your catalog, when you send me those links, when we, we watched it together yeah. once or twice, like, well, girl, if you like that, I wish you could see what I prefer. In my hair. <laughs> it's, just, it's always a preference, and I just have not gotten there yet. Like my sweet video, I mm-hmm. love Colin. Um, with it's Visual Craze, I think is his company. Super awesome. Um, that video, I would have taken certain scenes out, like the flashing. I, you know, I initially kind of didn't like it, but I kind of let it go. Mm-hmm. But um. The more I do things, the more I understand where I literally have to put my foot down and just say that I don't like it because in the end, I'm just not going to like it. So as I go, the more and more, um, what's kind of fueled 
where I am now is like saying no to things and or people will be like, oh, you can't do that, or that's not done, and I'm having to show them. Like, my, I had an ex-homeboy who shot my Wipe Me Down video, and I'm like, I want to get a view of me walking through the door, but the camera on the floor, and getting my foot shot. And he was like, two two feet off the floor, then one feet off the floor. I'm like, no. I was like, can I see the camera so I can show you mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? And I literally had to put the camera on the floor. And he was like, oh, okay, yeah, that looks good. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but I do wish some of those um situations like i wish i had the money because the money is is what you know you can pay people you can you you typically get what you ask for sometimes you can pay for shit and don't get what you ask for but um because i'm just so on fire for what i want to see which has not manifested yet um i think like It has changed the way my evolution has come. And I kind of wish there were more people who I was around, like, that could be here with me. But it's just, like, the communication. And I know I could probably seem overbearing or people say, oh, you're demanding or you're, but it's kind of, like, just a fuel. But for the stuff that I want to happen, I can't afford that right now. But the evolution is okay. The evolution is evolutioning as it can evolution. Mm -hmm. But just know I am not satisfied. But that's also on my natal chart Mm -hmm. that I won't be satisfied with certain things. But my bad. Your statement, you know, saying that you basically feel like you do the best with what you have. I'm gonna do the best I have with what I got. You know what I'm saying? What I got. I love that. Yeah. Uh, But anyway. Um, it's indicative of that because as a person who can't see your vision, but I'm seeing the visuals of your hard work and effort, I respect it. As a person who's in that creative and content creating field, it's done very well. Thank you. So challenge yourself to get closer to your vision because that's what it's all for. Mm -hmm. But also remember to, you know, pat yourself on the back because look at what you did with like nothing. So when you get everything, it's going to be worth it. Yeah, you have to enjoy the journey, as they say, exactly. which is super, it's super accurate. But you're like, I'm ready to get to my next Bro, <laughs> like, come on. Jesus Christos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just saying. Okay. But so yeah. in the last 23 years, what would you say that fans of your music know you for? Like when they're looking at a video and or listening to your songs, they'd be like, you know what? That's so Lillian Blanche right there. I love that. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I feel like I don't have enough fans to say this. I have supporters. I have people who pop in and pop out. And, you know, they like my music here and there. Um, there are some people who are genuinely my fans, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I would have to call them and ask them. <laughs> but my favorite is Demir. Demir, I know people say they're like my biggest fans, but mm-hmm. when I look like on SoundCloud, I can go on SoundCloud and I will see that she would listen to my songs like 50 times, oh, like God. over and over and over. I just niche it, and she's the only one mm-hmm. who I can confidently say was like is like my number one fan and she but but first of all she's the biggest artist in her own right Mm -hmm. and um i don't know but it's something that they could say that is uniquely me uh i don't know my melodies maybe sometimes i sound airy people say i have a unique voice and they can tell that it's me singing but also same people thought I was on Nas is that I know I can. <laughs> people, yo, people contacted me when I was a little girl. It was just like, yo, is that you on Nas's song? And I'm thinking to myself, like, do I really walk around like school saying I'm this big singer or something like that? Because why would anybody think that I'm on Nas's I know I can song? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think it, I don't know. That's a good question. Now I'm going to ask, can I call somebody? I mean, if you let me see. Hold up. Make sure they're okay with being on the I'm going to ask my key player, but he ain't even, he didn't respond to my text message today, so. 
He may not even answer my phone call. And that's okay. You can call him or text him and just come back to him. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We have to call him because now I want the answer to this question. <laughs> Please answer the phone. It means it's like 9 in Charlotte. Let me put it down here. People did not answer the phone for me. Is today Monday? No, today is not Monday. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. I'm going to call him you one more time. At the time, please record your message. At the time, please record your message. At the time. I don't, that's a shame. Like, I don't even know anybody who's, like, my fan that I can, like, call that will answer. What is that? That's lame. Okay, that sounds so well, but no, I don't no, even no. know if calling people. <laughs> right. Hold up. I don't even know. I was trying to do the voice. Like, let's call Apple on here. Let's see. She's a very famous DJ. But she never answers the phone. But. Hello, my love. Not you answered the phone. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So I got a question. I'm on a podcast right now, and she asked me a question, but I feel like maybe you can answer. Okay. What? What would fans? When fans hear my music, what do they say is uniquely me? Like, if they heard my music, they say, oh, yeah, that's Lillian because of, like, how I sound or what I do. Like, what unique at, what, what, what was the question? I was saying, uh, what are you known for? When they listen to a song, they saying, yeah, that's, that's Lillian. I know what she's going to say. I know what she's going to say. What do people say? What, what am I known for? Huh? And that's what she said. She said melody. She's like, maybe I'm known for my melody. And your yeah. your music is a vibe. It always feels like, at least for me as a fan, a new fan, not maybe as, as long as everyone else. To me, everything that you do feels it, it, vibe is like so perfect of a word. Yeah, vibe. It always it. feels like summer. Yeah. It always feels like spring. It never feels moody, even if it's a song about oh. emotions. It feels like the best right. part of what any experiences. Mm, wow, that sounds yeah. like nice. Okay, it feels like spring. And summer. It feels like it's spring. Sometimes it's fun. It's like, fun. it's like beach ball, barbecue. It's like You're cool so party. hilarious. Okay, yeah. so so spring and vibish and melodies. Yes. I think people have said this. Like melodies and I, I'm very raw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for participating. No problem. It's DJ SBK, everyone. Okay, I'm going to call you back because I'm, I'm glad. I'm so happy to hear your voice. Thank you for picking up. I miss you. I miss you. No I miss you and I love you long time. I love, I love you too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hit you back. All right. All right. surface that's about to overflow on a volcanic le level and you're about to be this person or you're about to be doing this is there anything upcoming that we need to be watching for as it relates to you mm. god willing um i'm about to do all the things that my mua keys said that she envisioned for me and what are those things give us just a teaser so I, know it all. you know what I'm going to read this okay. because whoever listens to the podcast, then they'll just have open insight about which. And sometimes, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes you're not supposed to expose what people say. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to keep it to yourself. I don't know. What is the, what is, what is, uh, what is your spirit telling you I should do? Should I read the whole thing or should I? Give us 
She's passed. Whenever you create a song that matches up with her vision, mm -hmm. you should put it in like the folds of your album to honor her. Okay. But in this podcast, just give us the paraphrase so that when, so, you, actually, when you actually express it in something that really matters to the gift mm -hmm. that she poured into when she was here, then that way we'll be hearing it for the first time or reading it for the first time. Mm. You get what so her vision for me was for me to see how great I am. And I I really feel like I'm a great person. I really feel like I really feel like I'm a great person, but over the years, um I don't know, I just question myself, like or people make me feel like or I've allowed other people's feelings about me feeling good about myself impact me. Mm -hmm. Or it's like misunderstood love for myself. The love, the, the little bit of love that I have for myself. Because, I mean, you know me. Mm -hmm. And so to be perfectly honest, like I really do talk bad about myself a lot. And I don't know if I have done that um, because... People have not allowed me to feel good about myself. Where it's like as soon as I get the courage to accept me fully as I am, like flaws and all, it's just like struck down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So people are really about to see me loving myself. Like, yes. Yeah, people are really about to see that version of me where I can't be shaken no matter like what people say or do to me. And um, I know that is really on the rise because I've really been kind of like looking within and really trying to push that out of me, like being okay with not being like, because every, oh my gosh, throughout my life, the main thing people say is, you know, not everybody has to like you. And it's, I know that. Mm -hmm. I don't want every. You don't have to freaking like me, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just like, don't try to go against me. Like, right. Don't actively, intentionally. Try to hurt, hurt me. Hurt to, me yeah, or harm me. Yes. Or like, go, you know. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Like, I'm like, even if I don't like anybody, I don't go after them. I don't. I don't make their life bad. I don't want to make their life bad, you know? Yeah, I don't like that. And so people are going to see that. And then, you know, God willing, he also saw me, like, doing performances with, like, Travis Scott and remaking Slum Village album and dressing in, uh, what, Christian... Uh, Siriano, um, just material and being at his fashion shows and collabing with some of the female artists that I herald, like that I love. Um, and so me and her had this thing where we loved Nipsey Hussle so much. Like we loved Nipsey. And um, we used to just talk on Nipsey all the time and just be encouraged by Nipsey all the time. And um, so she wanted me to just be great and do music at the highest level that I can and go to all of these wonderful places. Like she wanted, she she saw me performing with Travis Scott at Coachella. Now that just sounds crazy, <laughs> but I would love to do that. And then, then when he, you know, when all that stuff happened with his fest and everything like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, how is he going to come back from this? But I know he can come back from this because what I'm learning is that, um, you know, people forget that artists and celebrities and they, they are human people. And the difference is they make mistakes in the public eye. Other people make the mistakes and you you have the privilege of only having your family and your friends chastise you or scold you or, you know, look at you badly. And um, 
uh, I don't know, but just having the strength to be able to get through those storms is what people are going to see. And the version of myself that is that bitch. Ooh. And making money. And yes. going and being known overseas. Like a I really would love like they're they're gonna see me with bigger audiences internationally and like one of just one of the greatest artists. And I really a, a big dream of mine was to kind of be like, you know, the most sampled voice. James Brown holds that title, but if I could just be somewhere around there where people want to sample my music, I just want to make melodies and just vibe to thousands of people crowds. So that is probably since I've been doing this blog from Alex, is that was probably the most beautiful answer because of course, since I'm contacting individuals based on what they're doing within their community, or they may have some type of unique, unique type of creation. It's like, of course, the purpose of the podcast part of the blog is to converse about whatever they're working on. But this is probably the most vulnerable, the most humanized conversation that this platform has had. And so just like with your very authentic emotions that are surrounding the questions that you're answering, you answered it in the most human way. It's not just my music. As a person, I'm about to present a different person, which means my music is going to be presented in a different way. As a whole, it's going to have bigger, you know, audiences. It's going to, and overseas. Once you get overseas, honey, because over here in the states, it's different. <laughs> it's so different. I just want people to appreciate my music, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure that. Um, it's reached them yet mm -hmm. and it's reached them to a level where they appreciate it they appreciate the art i'm saying and of course my my i don't have an extensive catalog i mean i have a lot of freestyling things um but of course i haven't been privy to production mm -hmm. so it's just like with the production that i do get i'm making timeless music and i always said that i want to make timeless music and um it's music that i'm comfortable with and that i can hear at any time and i'm very happy with it but um, as it pertains to like just the podcast, I when I think about all the times that I have done podcasts, um, they always take a turn to talking about just love and my love experiences because of course that has just been my thing. Mm -hmm. Because I don't really I, I have people, I know people, but sometimes like my way of getting over things is just to discuss it. And it's um I've used podcasts and things to divulge too much information about me. And I sometimes you need to just keep things to yourself because people don't know how to take that and help you heal. Mm -hmm. They use it against you. Uh huh. And then also podcast platforms are used to just, you know, give your opinion or assert your opinion on other people or have this just pseudo typical, um, vibe that comes from artists and I, and I get it artists feel like they can't just be themselves but it's just like I've been doing this so long um and in my head like even as a little girl I just tried to be perfect all the time which I didn't do a lot of things and then I learned as I got older people did things to me to make me react so that I could you know I was told like oh you just think you're perfect like this is what I've been Oh, you think you're perfect. Oh, you think you're better than Jesus. It's like when I went on a holy walk and I just did not listen to um, secular music. I didn't even listen to secular instrumentals. Like when I used oh, to, wow. Yeah, there was a radio station <laughs> that I listened to where if they had commercials. She said, when I do it, I'm going to do, do it. Do it. And that's, and I mean, that's kind of like a, it can be, that could be a flaw for people who know me because it's, sometimes it's not black and white. I mean, sometimes it's not gray. It's just literally black and white. And it's only because of my lived experiences where it's just like I have to be sure. And and I think that's where the control aspect comes from. Why right. some, some relationships I have, it's just like I need them to let me know things because I'm so used to being abandoned or I'm so used to people using things against me. Mm -hmm. But um also but in that right where I brought it up, um, with the podcast is it's just like what the fuck is the point? Mm -hmm. Because it's just like you're gonna be listening to the same thing just a different podcast mm -hmm. and it's just like the purpose of 
even doing interviews and having interviews is hopefully the listener gains something either learning something new about themselves that they could possibly change by looking at someone else's experience Mm -hmm. and putting themselves in their shoes or they can learn more uh you know by getting updates about what the music is but you know i kind of put that online um or just to know who the person is as a person and i feel like we're moving into a time where people genuinely even if they don't want to know who a person is all the way it's going to be beneficial for them to know who people are all the way because it's just nasty online Mm -hmm. the way people talk about people and you know even people who i don't have a i don't care for it just doesn't sit right in my spirit to bash them online and even when i talk about people some people that i dislike is more so from a perspective of wow i'm just so hurt by them and i just wish that they didn't behave like that or do that or say those things and um and that's another thing i'm working on just not talking about people and that has been um something that i've seen when i talk to people on podcasts and things like that and that could just be interpreted wrong like my son said you know before i came here Mm -hmm. as i was you know coming here he said you know mom just be mindful of what you say because um you don't want you know you to use anything against me or other people to to take that and misinterpret what you're saying and for him to be so young and to say that it's just you know <clears throat> he's, <a> little <laughs> <laughs> he's so he's so mindful but then i had to think to myself like well i don't want to be a robot mm-hmm. and i also um i don't want to be in my head thinking all the time so yeah so that's that But I also, like, we had a discussion before, and I was telling you that one of the reasons why I prefer to do uh, this part of the blog, this podcast part of the blog, as an audio only is because I'm paying homage to the original podcast mm-hmm. where we don't behind the scenes everything. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You can show up to my set <laughs> looking your best or your worst. It doesn't even matter because, to me, if someone was watching us right now, there's so much they'd be distracted by. Like mm-hmm. we're at, you know, the podcast site, we've got all this artwork in here. They might be thinking about, oh, I want to buy that. Oh, I wonder how they did that. They might be looking at what you have on. They might be dissecting it in the best ways and the worst ways. They might be looking at me. You know, they, they're they not hearing, or what I should say, they're not listening if they're watching the behind the scenes of a For podcast. Sure. And if your intention in being this honest in this conversation is to inspire people in some kind of way, whatever that might be, whether they want to be a music artist, whether they are trying to find their voice in life or in artistry. Mm -hmm. To me, this is the best way. You know, this is, someone could be cooking in their kitchen right now, and when they hear you talk about the parts that have hurt you the most over time from your experiences, that might just make them stop and be bold enough to communicate with someone about that. I hope so. I, I hope gen- so too. I you know, we both so. always talk about communicate. Communication yeah. is key along with comprehension. Yeah, it's hand a, in hand. It's a it's a hard thing to do, but it has to be done, um, especially for the world to move forward. Mm-hmm. And I think we everybody has been in a place so long where we have sat in shit. Mm-hmm. I hate to say that, <laughs> you but it's just like yeah. Something something has to change, and that's one of them, but yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what is your next big project that's coming up that you want all of my Martians to know about right now? My next big project, I mean, it's already done. It's a single. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful single that I love so much. It started off um, as a weird situation. Anyway, the song is called Rockstar Lover. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm just going to go ahead and stay over that. Yeah, it's called Rockstar Lover. I mean, I'll, I'll dive on a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. So it's called Rockstar Lover. I started it in um, the ice maker. We got the ice maker in the back that's over here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we can be real on this podcast. Yeah. I don't have no muffled up stuff that we just did here. 
Keep, keeping it real and keeping it raw. But go ahead. Keeping it real and raw. But raw and raw, Rockstar <laughs> Lover first came about in 2021. There was another rapper in my city mm-hmm. who we weren't together, and I would say it's Limerick. You know, just a strong liking, and he would just flirt with me, and we would occasionally talk, and we would see each other. He was extra touchy, you know, but and. In a, 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 yeah, and in a permitted way. I definitely uh permitted that. And um that's what that's why like when I said, Hey, like what's up? Like, do you like like wh- like I know you like me because clearly you keep touching me, you keep being in my face when you see me, you're trying to hug on me and just, you know what I'm saying? And so when I brought it up to him, he was like like, oh, I didn't know that. What the fuck do you mean you didn't know that? Which is what... You didn't know what you were doing with your hands. Bruh, like, you know, and he's a cancer. So, I don't know, but they say cancer men are the worst. But um, I made the song... Are they, are they the worst? Get in my comments and tell me. Yeah, they definitely are the absolute worst. And so, I made a song called Friend Zone, just expressing my disgust with his response. Because what are you talking about? Like, why are you acting like you're dumb? Because you know what I'm saying? It's not like a like where you're talking to somebody and you're just like, oh, maybe. Yeah, but you're actually physically touching me and in my space. But during that time, um, it just was a thing where it just couldn't be discussed. So it's just like, and and even physically, he doesn't seem like the type of person who I would talk to or date. And so on a bigger, like picture wise, you know, in the song, I say no loving in the limelight. Mm-hmm. Only when the time's right. And if, if the time would have been right, it would have been where we both mutually liked each other, both mutually agreed that we liked each other, mm-hmm. both mu- mutually agreed that we would date, you know. Mm-hmm. So it never got to that. It was kind of like a, a flirtatious ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A flirtation ship. Yeah, it was a flirtation ship. And um, she's already got that trademark. Yeah. And you have to be registered. <laughs> Don't even try it out there. Yeah. Don't even. It's a, a flirtation ship is what it was. Period. Yeah, I think so. And um, but then also like we had the same engineer who I went to school with the, the engineer. And so he probably wouldn't understand why I would talk to him, but you know, vice versa or whatever. And so it was kind of like a thing that was between us, but then also as an aqua, I prefer things to be kept private until I know for sure. As a as an aqua and as a person I mean, Virgo moon, okay? Mm-hmm. And also as a person who has abandonment issues, like I need to I need to know, I need you to be sure. Mm-hmm. I need to- in, Certainty. In, in, yeah, yeah. Certainty, that's the word I wanna use. I need a cert- certainty. And so um, I made up that, I made up the hook and the hook was the hook. Mm-hmm. And- um, Can you give us a little bit of- Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Rockstar lover. Although we undercover, I only got my eyes on you, eyes on you, eyes on you. No loving in the long light, only when the time's right. They don't even know the truth, no I'm coming home with you. I'm giving all my love to you. Yes. So. See what I'm talking about? You feel that vibe? That felt like. That's the song somebody gonna uh, dedicate to somebody in the yeah, summer. Okay, yeah, yeah. they gonna be like, he gonna be at the barbecue. He gonna be at the cookout. Make sure they play that. I'm Listen. <laughs> so it's kind of it's a pop rock record. Right. It's like a pop rock record, and I love bass. I'm a lover of bass, so mm-hmm. in my songs, like bass has to be in there. Okay. Um, but it's coming out on May 10th. I don't know when this podcast is gonna drop, but it's coming out. May I'm gonna 10th. try to edit it as soon as possible because your your situation is on a deadline. So I'm gonna try to get this out within the next few days, next week. Listen, we gotta give it to them. Wow, <laughs> we edit, just drop it out there. But yeah, we just so- gonna drop it out there and just give it to y'all like how we did it up in here, okay? Yes, and so you know, ice maker, you know, yeah, and everything. Laughter, me, us moving around on this couch, laughing. And... No, I definitely get it. make it raw. Yes, um, that's why you guys are hearing all this because I talked to anyone I interview in advance, and she was like, "I just want this to be raw. All the sounds, everything that's going on. Let them experience this like we experienced." Yes, so you're going to get, like I said, the raw and the real. 
And I'm glad because I mean, at this point, I can no longer be Beyonce because mm -hmm. I'll have this perfect. Oh, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna get in trouble in school. I'm not gonna, you know. But later, you know, issues with people and just having to stand up for myself and just, you know, having to pull up. You know, we've had those. We've yeah. had. We haven't had all that. And so that has happened, but I'm still a great person. Um, and yeah, so that project is coming out. Hopefully, it will be on a movie. It will be on a movie. It's we we're gonna get synced for a movie. This this yeah, it has to be. And so yeah, that's the next big project that's happening. I'm excited for it. I have already so um, if you guys don't know already, if it hasn't been mentioned, we've been talking about doing different things. Because Dave is the main script, right? Mm -hmm. So I, and they can actually pre-save it to Spotify. I have YouTube Music, so I already have a pre-save in my mm -hmm. YouTube yes. Music. So that sucker is gonna pop up. Car. <laughs> Spotify, Deezer, um, Apple Music, um, Amazon, I believe. Let me see. I actually have. Check it out. Let me check. Let's look into the thing. We're going to yeah. look into it. 